The National Broadcasting Company presents Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. From Hollywood, another authentic reenactment of a case transcribed from the files of the Texas Rangers. Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles, and 50 men who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. From the files of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on fact. Only names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Case for tonight, Wild Crop. It is 7.30 p.m. a Saturday night in October 1947. In the fields near Burrowville, West Texas, two men stand in the darkness beneath a cluster of button willows. What you say we light up, Whitey? Later. I only want to take a few drags. Later, I said. Stick that button match back in your pocket. All right, Whitey. You don't have to get tough about it. Then don't make me tell you things twice. What time is it? How do I know? You got my watch, along with everything else. You act right tonight, and I may give it back to you. You sure Jennings comes this way? Of course, I'm sure. Path through here is the shortest way from the ranch to my house. What time was your sister expecting him? Between 7.30 and 8. That's when he always comes. We'll make him a little late tonight. We'll make him nice and pretty for her. You can't keep him away from her, but maybe I can. If I had a lot of good, it's going to do you. What do you mean by that crack? She don't like you, and you know it. She liked me well enough before Jennings drifted in here. What's so hot about a stinking cowpoke? Don't ask me. Yes, sis. You getting smart, bud? I'm just telling you. Well, maybe you better stop telling me. Unless you want to give up smoking. I can get it someplace else. From who? You not only don't know where to get the stuff, you wouldn't have the money to buy it. I could do without it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I heard a lot of hemp smokers say that. You need marijuana and I need your sister. And don't forget it. You Shut up. You... Somebody's coming. Yeah. Things must be... He's the only one who comes this way, I reckon. Other hands go the other way, to town, the ranch pickup. Remember what I told you. Just do like I said. Hey, what are them things you're putting on your hands? Brass knuckles. Look, I, I thought you said you was just going to fight. That's all, bud. You could kill a guy with them things. Let me worry about that. But I should be quiet. You'll hear you. All right, bud. Get him off that horse. Jennings? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Who's that? Me. Bud? Yeah. Where are you? Right here. I want to talk to you. All right. Stay here, boy. Well, you look like you've been waiting here for me. I have. Where do you think you're going, Jenny? That's kind of a silly question, ain't it, bud? I'm going to call on your sister. I don't think so. And you're thinking ain't what it should be. Why don't you grow up? I told you to stay away from her. I just wait for her to tell me that. Now I'm going to tell you something. If you ever again lay a hand on her for seeing me like I got a hunch you did once, I'm going to have you talking cotton from here to Houston. You want to start something? But if you weren't Mary's brother, I'd kick your teeth out. Oh, kid, why don't you grow up? Your sister's a big girl. We're going to get married soon. You and me are going to be in the same family whether we like it or not. I love her. I'm not going to hurt her. You're doing right, you ain't. Because you ain't even going to see her anymore. Starting right now. If you think you're going to stop me, bud, here's your chance to stop trying. Well, that suits me. Come on, oh, you snaky little... No! You, you, you lousy... Get, get in this, Whitey! Don't worry, boy. I'm coming out. Oh, you too, huh, Whitey? Yeah, me too. Get on, Whitey! <laughs> Give it to him, Whitey! He's got my mouth. Kill him! Uh, Go you on, like Whitey. it, Jennings? Come on, I got more. Give it to him! I got something on your head. I got these. It's crazy. And these. Oh. He cut my mouth. Stop whining. 
Help me pick him up and stand him against that tree. What for? You want him running to the sheriff? Stand him up there. We started this. Let's finish it. The body of Pete Jennings was discovered the following day when other ranch hands started a search for him after finding his horse grazing while fully saddled. The sheriff was summoned, and he in turn requested the immediate aid of a Texas ranger. Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned. Body's in them buttonwheels right ahead, Jace. A couple of my deputies are there with it. Did you tell them not to tromp around? They're experienced men. Good. When did you say the ranch hand saw Jennings last? Last night. Had his chuck with him, then rode out. Night riding? What for? Oh, he wasn't working. He was on his way to see a girl. Been going steady with Mary Adams. He always go carting on a horse? Well, he didn't have no car. Besides, the ranch road to the Adams place is no bargain. <laughs> Reckon it was the easiest way for him to get there. I see. Uh, those your men? Yeah, I staked them around the grove to keep people out. The place was kind of crowded this morning when the J.P. was here. Looks like they shoot everybody off. Howdy, fellas. Right in through here, Jace. There's a little path. Yeah, I see it. Oh, oh. Right there we are. Oh, oh, oh charcoal. Not very pleasant to look at. No. When we first come out here this morning, I thought maybe it was an accident. Maybe his horse threw him or he hit a branch or something. No. One look around here kills that idea. I know. Dead leaves on the ground. No rocks. Nothing he could have hit that hard. Whatever his face met up with was plenty hard. Flesh laid open to the bones. Jaw and nose smashed. Any of the other ranch hands ride this way last night? Nope. Are you sure about that? I checked. All but one of them rode into town on the pickup. I know where they all were. I'll show you the statements later. You said one hand stayed. Yeah, but he never left the bunkhouse. You make sure of that? <laughs> I didn't have to, Jace. He's in bed with a broken leg. He's been there two weeks. Uh, I guess we can count him out, then. Any money on the body? No, but this outfit pays once a month on the 15th. That's two days off. Cop folks all figure to be broke. It'd be a big surprise if they weren't. The whole fight must have taken place right around here in a circle about ten feet. Why? The leaves are all ground apart. Other patches haven't been disturbed much. Hey, wait a second. Another spot over here. Eh, not much here. Not like the other spot. A couple of leaves are stained here. Might be blood. Pretty far from the body, Jace. Leaves over there are stained a lot more. Yeah, I know. You find any signs of pony tracks around the grove? Too many. Most of the ranch hands were around here this morning when the body was found. They were all mounted. Then I brought my boys in, too. I guess that'd wipe out any tracks that might have been around. We'll have a look to make sure. Couldn't be helped, Jake. Oh, I know that, Sheriff. I wasn't being critical. Where are they going to go over the body? At the funeral home in Burrowville. Medical examiner's waiting for us to bring the body in. Better have somebody move it in on a buckboard. I sent for one. Good. I want to get a couple of jars for my saddlebag. Jars? Yeah. I want to take samples of those stained leaves around the body and in that other spot. Oh. Well, why from both places, though? Takes at least two men to make a fight, Sheriff. No rule says that one of them has to do all the bleeding. <laughs> Packed the samples of bloody leaves and got them off to the Austin lab by plane. The medical examiner's autopsy on Jennings' body showed that Jennings had been beaten to death with an object or objects of metallic hardness. The sheriff and I left the examination room and we came around the side of the funeral home. We looked through the glass window. Two people were in the waiting room, a man and a woman. The woman was crying. Who are they? Through the window there. Mary Adams and her brother Bud. She the one you said Pete Jennings was on his way to see when he got killed? Yeah. You want to talk to her? She might be able to give us a motive for the killing. We need one badly. She looks pretty broken up. I know, but this can't wait. Murders like this cool off too quickly unless you stay right on them. I can't fight that. Come on. Oh, shit. Please, you got to get a hold of yourself. Howdy, bud. Mary. Oh, howdy, sheriff. Uh... This here is Ranger Pearson. Uh, Jace is Mary Adams and her brother Bud. Howdy, howdy, howdy ma'am. I'd like to ask you a few questions, ma'am. Look, I know you got a job to do, Ranger, but do you have to talk to her now? You think I would if it wasn't necessary? Well, you see the shape she's in. Pete Jennings isn't in very good shape either, Bud. 
Mary may give us the help we need to get the man who killed him. She can tell you what you want to know later. No, it's, it's all right, but I, I may as well talk to them now. Thank you, ma'am. When can I see him? Why do I have to wait here? Well, it'll be a while yet, Mary. The doctor had to look him over first. Uh, maybe you better just talk to us and then go on no, home and do... No, I, I, I want to stay here. What do you want to know? Uh, Pete Jennings have any trouble with anybody you know about, ma'am? I mean, was there bad blood between him and anybody? He? Well, no, he was a quiet fellow. He ever in any trouble with the law? Anything like that? No. You mean not that he ever told you about it? Don't you start that again, bud. Uh, just a minute, ma'am. What do you mean by that, bud? Nothing. Then why'd you say it? Talk up. I told you it was nothing. He just never liked Pete, that's all. Well, he stayed now. Why can't you leave him alone? There's nothing against him. I just didn't want him hanging around you, that's all. Maybe you would better... Explain. Excuse me, Sheriff. Maybe this isn't the time to talk to Miss Adams after all. We'll wait until later. All right. If you say so, Jay. Sorry to bother you, ma'am. Come on, Sheriff. Now, what was the idea of that, Jace? Thought you wanted to talk to her. I think I'd rather talk to her brother. Bud? Yeah. He seems to know something that she can't or won't tell us. He might talk more freely if she isn't around to argue with him. He's looking up now. He sees us out here. Signal him to come out. Right. You got it. He's coming now. Let's walk down a ways so she can't see us. You signal me to come out? Yeah. I wanted to get you away from your sister. Keep from upsetting her any further. I appreciate that. What were you going to say in there about Pete Jennings? Oh, I don't know. He's dead. Don't seem right to talk about him. Must have been some reason you objected to him seeing Mary. Would you want your sister taken up with a strange cowpoke that just drifted in from nowhere? Cowpokes are always drifting. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with them. Whitey Talmadge was a cowpoke. You didn't beat when Mary used to go out with him. I know Whitey. He's okay. You never heard of him getting in any trouble, did you? Well, no, I... You keep suggesting that Jennings had been in trouble, though. All I know is he sure could have been. You got a reason for thinking so? The way he acted. You always seemed scared. About what? How should I know? Scared, that's all. A few times he asked me if I'd ever seen a tall, dark fellow around town. Stranger. You ever ask anybody else about that? I don't know. Is that all there was to it? Why did he ask you, especially? I don't know, I tell you. I guess it was because, well, I work on and off at the paint store near the Continental Trailways Depot. Maybe he figured that I'd notice people getting off the buses. You think he was afraid somebody was after him? Is that it? You figure it out. That's why I never wanted him around Mary. There was something wrong. You ever tell him how you felt? Yeah, I told him. What'd he say? He told me to mind my own business. Oh, did you? Wasn't much else I could do, was it? I reckon Mary's old enough to pick her own bows. You and Jennings ever have a fight? Of course not. Where were you last night? Between 7 and 8 o'clock. Me? Well, let me see. Uh... Oh, I, I was at Whitey's place. I thought you said this fellow Whitey was a cowpoke. He got a place of his own? Yeah, Jay. He stopped punching cattle about a year ago. Bought a small place way out by Rocky Mason. The uh, land out there isn't worth much. Still, he must have saved his money. No, he, he just hit it lucky once. Gambling. Uh, look, I told you all I knew. I'd better get back to my sister. All right, go ahead. You boys take a set of fingerprints from Jennings' body, Sheriff? Yeah, why? I want to shoot a copy of them through to Austin. And they're at my office. Do you think Jennings might have had a record? Might have, whether he had one or not. We'll have to check back on him as far as we can. Looking for what? The tall, dark man that Bud says Jennings was so worried about. In just a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. It is absolutely imperative that our armed forces have an adequate reserve of blood plasma at all times. The only answer to this crisis is you, the American people, who have never failed in such an emergency. The Department of Defense urges every one of us to contribute blood plasma. Blood cannot be manufactured or cultivated. It must be given by human beings to save a life. 
Make an appointment right away to donate a pint of your blood. Then know in your heart that you have saved a life. We continue now with Tales of the Texas Rangers and tonight's case, Wild Crop, an authentic story from the files of the Texas Rangers. I spent the next day drifting around the countryside asking questions about Jennings. Anybody who'd known him had the same answer, a nice, quiet fellow. Got a few other interesting bits of information, too, before I got back to the sheriff's office at about sundown. Oh, howdy, Jake. Sheriff, anything come in for me? Yeah, about an hour ago, just after you called me from the Saunders ranch. I called back, but they said you'd left. What do you got? The reports from Austin. I wrote everything down here. Hmm. You were right about that blood. Good thing you took a couple of samples from that ground out there. Yeah. One type A. That matches the medical examiner's typing on Jennings. The other sample was type O. Too bad it wasn't the other way around. Type O is very common. The other report doesn't help much. The fingerprint check? Yeah, Jennings didn't have a record. Didn't seem to be running from anything either. The report says he wrote to friends on his last job, place where he worked before he came here, and asked them to pass his address around and have people write to him here. Sure left himself wide open to be followed by that tall, dark man. Yeah, it wasn't any tall, dark man. You sound pretty sure. I was sure before I ever read this report. You know old man Crandall? Runs the newsstand in the best depot? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was one of the people I saw today. Jennings used to buy his tobacco there. Crandall liked him. They were pretty friendly. Crandall was right there to see every bus that came in. Jennings ever asked him about a stranger? No. Never asked anybody else I could find either. Never asked anybody but Bud Adams. Funny he should ask the one person who didn't like him. Yeah, mighty funny. To your knowledge, Sheriff, has Bud Adams ever been in a hospital around here? Oh, I don't know, Jason. Must have been in one in the Army, though. Come home with a medical discharge. Fine, that'll do. Hello, operator. I want long distance, please. Get me Texas Ranger headquarters, Cam Mabry, Austin. Yes, sir. One moment, please. What are you after, Jace? A check of Bud's army record. I want to get his blood type. Austin dug up the answer in an hour. Bud Adams was blood type O. It fit. It wasn't enough to grab him, but it was enough to take us out to the Adams place for a few more questions. Mary Adams was there, more composed than she'd been at the funeral parlor. And somebody else was there, too. Whitey Talmadge. We were introduced. Glad to meet you, Ranger. Thanks. Your brother around, Miss Adams? He went out to the shed and back a while ago. I don't know what's keeping him so long. Oh, he said he had something to fix. Oh. Well, uh, reckon you want to talk to these people, Mary. I, I just stopped by to tell you how sorry I am about the way things turned out for you. Thanks, Whitey. Don't rush off on our account, Whitey. Bud's the one we want to see. Sure, stay put. Well, you can go through the house and out the back. Fine. Come on, Jake. Oh, uh, Whitey, Mr. Talmadge. Yeah? Understand you used to be a cowpoke. Yeah. You ever ride in the rodeo up at Abilene? Abilene? No. I kind of thought I saw you up there once. A fellow named Whitey rode for a ranch from this section. Looks something like you. Wasn't me. Understand you got your own place now. Yeah. I bet it beats riding for somebody else. It sure does. And yeah, Bud told us about it today. Oh? Must have taken you about ten years to save that much money on a cowpoke salary. Yeah, it was rough going. Yeah, well, I get to talking about spreads and I forget what I came here for. Come on, Sheriff. Flushed something there, Jake. Uh, maybe not. Bud said Whitey bought his place with gambling money. Uh, we're lawmen. Maybe Whitey didn't want to admit that to us. Then what'd you rope him for? If he used to go with a girl, he's moving back into the picture mighty fast. Here's the old carriage, Shed. <laughs> sure dark in here. Uh, light a match. Nobody here. No, but there was less than a minute ago. Is that a back door? Yeah. Figure he ducked out there? Maybe. We can catch him. No. Don't let him think we want to chase him. Better drop that match and light another one. What are you sniffing at? Still a little smoke in here. So, Bud was smoking a cigarette. Yeah. Old jacket on the hook here. 
I wonder if it's his. It is. I've seen him wearing it. Recently? Mm-hmm. On and off. Good. That's the match. I want to take this with me. What for? To send through to the lab at Austin. Well, what are you going to have him look for? Man's cigarettes generally leave a few crumbs in the seams of his pockets. I'm kind of curious about the brand that Bud smokes. Must be the cheapest brand from the smell of a smoke in here. That's what I was smelling. If I'm right, Sheriff, it's not cheap. It's expensive. In more ways than one. That smoke smells like marijuana. I shipped the jacket through to Austin on the night plane, and we had a telephone report shortly before dawn. Tobacco grains in Bud's pocket showed traces of cannabis sativa, the hemp leaf from which marijuana is made. You look like you struck oil, Jace. I did. That was it. Marijuana? No doubt about it. Man who smokes that stuff could turn killer in a minute. We better pick Bud up. On what charge? Possession of narcotics. Not enough for that. Bud could say other people wore the jacket. You mean we got to sit here and let a hophead get away with murder? No. We're going to the source. Find out where he got the stuff. Well, there's none of it grown around here. He must be getting it from across the border. I don't think so. Where do you figure? This spread Whitey Talmadge bought up near Rocky Mesa. Was there a house on the land? No, he had to build himself a place. Reckon his shack's the only one up there. Sure, it's the only one. The land there is dirt cheap because it's no good for grazing, no good for cattle, and you can't raise a crop on it. Only thing that would grow up there is a weed, and that's what marijuana is. A weed. I should have wondered why a couple could buy land up there. What are we waiting for? Come on. I'm towing a double horse trailer on my car. You can load your pony in with charcoal. We'll drive as close to Rocky Mesa as we can get, and the ponies can take us up to Whitey's Spread. Watch where your pony steps, Jace. This is rough country. Which way is the place? I don't know. We'll have to comb for it. Ride around the mesa. It's near the base someplace. Must be over there. Where? Off to the right. See the smoke coming up? Yeah. Whitey must be home if he's got a fire going. We ought to be just in time for breakfast. And he won't feel much like feeding us. Hey, cut over this way. It's like better footing for the pony. All right. Get up, sir. Get over there. Sheriff. What, Jace? That's no cooking fire. Look. Look at all that smoke. Yeah, there's a regular cloud of it. What do you make of that? Whitey got scared. I think his crop's going up in smoke before we can get to it. Come on, pound leather. Up, start. Come on, come on. Up. That ran in, Sheriff. Woo, 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 boy. Ooh, boy. What is it? Some fresh tracks here. Look. Two horses. Came this far and then turned back toward the mesa. Now, why? Look in the direction we came from and you'll see why. Roads in clear view from this point. Our car shows right down the slope between those rocks. Bud must have come back here with Whitey last night. They were riding down this morning and spotted us. Might have seen us taking the horses out of the trailer. Come on. Let's see if we can save anything from that fire. Get up, Charlie. Up, boy. Come on. Took them a little time to ride back and fire that stuff, Jace. They can't be far off. They can be a million miles off if we can't get some evidence to pin on them. They... Hey. There they are now. Where? Over to the right, past the smoke. On the pony, see him? Yeah, but what do we do now? You head for the fire. If you can get a clump of that stuff that isn't completely burned, grab it. Then come after me. Well, where are you going? After him. Come on, Chuck. Yes, boy. They saw me coming and they split up. I had to make a fast decision. I had a feeling they were both in on the murder of Jennings, but all we had on them was a marijuana charge. I cut after Bud. He was my best bet for one reason. Growers like Whitey Talmadge might not smoke the stuff. But I knew Bud did, and the ones who smoke it are the shakiest. I caught him just before he reached the road. Better rain in, Bud. Rain in, boy, or I'll stop you with a bullet. And stop that pony. Ah, that's better. Now get off with your hands over your head. I ain't got a gun. Just keep him up anyhow. Whoa, whoa, Chuck. Now stand still while I dig out your cigarette. I ain't got any. I, I tell you, I ain't got any. No? What are these? You ought to smoke the kind they sell in stores. These look kind of homemade. The, the whitish. Whitey would have burned them like everything else is burning back there. But you couldn't resist sneaking a few, could you? Why'd you chase me? Why'd you go after him? I'll tell you why. Because there was somebody else's blood on the ground besides Jennings. Type O blood. Your type. No. 
You killed him, bud. No, no. Give me them cigarettes. I gotta have them. Sure you gotta have them, but you couldn't buy them, could you? Not enough money. What kind of a deal did you make? Did Whitey promise you a lifetime supply for killing Jennings so he could have your sister? I didn't. I didn't do it. I didn't. I suppose you didn't smoke this stuff either. Let me alone. Why don't you let me alone? I should have seen it in your eyes the first time I saw you. Whitey's going to be free. He's burned everything we had on him. He'll be all right. But you're going to jail for possession, bud. And whether we convict you or not, you're going to stand trial for murdering Jennings. Your blood was found on that ground, too. Your blood. Why did you not kill him? Not me. Why you did you kill him? Don't lie. You hit him with something hard. What was it? It was Whitey. He had brass knuckles. I didn't want to kill him. Why he was just going to beat him. Beat on his face. All right, bud. You hear that, Sheriff? I sure did. Everything was burned up out there, Jake. I grabbed what I could. That's all right. We won't need the marijuana charge. Hold him. I'll meet you later where we left the car. You going after Whitey? Yeah, you cut south over the Mesa when they split. There's no roads down there. That's all Big Ben country, right onto the Rio Grande. He's heading for the border. Don't worry, Sheriff. I'll make sure he never gets there. Up, Sarky. Up, boy. It was up to the horses, and I had the best. I raked charcoal all the way once I picked up the trail. A clear trail and a mixture of alkali and sand. In less than an hour, I had a dust cloud to follow. Then I saw Whitey and his pony through the haze. The pony stumbled, almost fell. Whitey went off. He ran for a clump of mesquite and dropped behind it. Whoa, oh, oh boy. Fight smart, Ranger. You better stay there. Whitey, if you're smart, you'll surrender. Listen to me, Ranger. I'll make you a deal. Try it. I got some dough. Almost 2,000 bucks. Maybe you found a little evidence back here, and maybe you didn't. Take the money and let's call it even. You're forgetting another little charge, Whitey. You killed a man. Why so quiet? Don't you want to make a deal on that one? You're bluffing. Am I? Bud spilled it all. Brass knuckles aren't going to do you any good now. Take the money, Ranger. If I killed one man, I've got nothing to lose killing another one. Is it a deal? I'll tell you. As soon as I deliver you to the warden at Huntsville or the county morgue, now take your pick, Whitey, because I'm coming for you. Looks like you picked yourself a low card, mister. With Whitey Talmadge dead, Bud Adams entered a plea of guilty of murder in the second degree. On July 8, 1948, he was sentenced to the Texas State Penitentiary at Huntsville for a term of 50 years. Next week, Joe McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. McRae is currently seen starring in the Universal International Technicolor production, Cattle Drive. The cast included Tony Barrett, Sam Edwards, Barney Phillips, Harley Bear, and Michael Ann Barrett. Technical advisor was Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers. This story was transcribed and adapted by Joel Murcock, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keats. Hal Gibney speaking. The Silver Jubilee on NBC. Next, hear The Big Show with guest stars including Fred Allen, Maxine Sullivan, Jack Pearl, Yul Brynner, Gertrude Berg, Portland Hoffa, and your charming hostess, Tallulah Bankhead. Then enjoy mirth and music with Phil Harris and Alice Fay. Later, Theater Guild on the Air features Claudette Colbert and Gregory Ratoff in 20th Century. Yes, for the best in radio programming, stay tuned to NBC. The NBC radio network is now entering its second quarter century as a great entertainment medium. Next, it's The Big Show. All this and Tallulah, too, on NBC.